Hi, I'm Melissa Shea, President and CEO of the Long Island Real Estate Investors Association. Two decades ago, on a dare, I purchased my first home with no money down. I received $7,000 cash at the closing and earned $200 a month in passive income, all while my tenant was paying the mortgage. Since then, we've purchased over $30 million in real estate and have taught people just like you how to do the same. Go to outoftheratracepodcast.com, register, and let us teach you how to become financially independent through real estate investing today. Hey guys, you're listening to Out of the Rat Race Podcast. Have you always wanted to be financially independent through real estate investing, but you're not quite sure where to begin? Then you're listening to the right show because that's what we teach. Go to outoftheratracepodcast.com, register, and we'll send you our ebook that will explain to you where you can get the money to begin investing in real estate. You'll also receive email notifications on our upcoming events and promotions and much more. Be sure to follow us and turn on your notifications so that you're kept up to date on all of our new content, which is uploaded one to three times a week. And now that that's said and out of the way, let's get into today's episode. So as I'm sure you already know, my name is John Shea, and sitting across from me is an empty chair. That's right, it's another boring Just John episode. So today, I really want to talk about networking and rewards. So I'm sure that you've heard people say that your net worth is only as good as your net work. And you may have also heard that the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Well, guess what? These statements are 100% accurate. Who you associate yourself with and the people that you have on your team are a direct representation of who you are, what you tolerate, and what you stand behind. I think part of our problem is that we have multiple networks for different aspects of our life and don't really know how to evenly balance them. It's all right. It's normal. Humans are social creatures. It's in our DNA. Our daily habits, good or bad, are created by our network and social life. So there's a little exercise that I uh, like have planned out for you today. Uh, obviously, if you're driving, don't do it now. Wait till you get home or you, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. I don't care. Um, I want you to make a few lists. Make as many lists as you need. These lists are going to be the places that you socialize and or network. So the places that you go to network with people or you go to socialize with. So make a list for the bar. Make a list uh, for your job, your uh, the school that you go to, PTA meetings, the gym, and so on and so forth. Then list out the names of the people that you socialize with at these places regularly. After you're done, I want you to put the pen down and just look at them. Analyze them. Look at each name and ask yourself, what does this person bring to my table? You may find that more than half of the list really do nothing to help you grow as a person to motivate you to achieve success. At the end of the day, they really don't even know you on a personal level. I did this a while ago, and I realized that some of the quote-unquote friends that I associate with myself with regularly had no idea what my children's names were, let alone how many kids I had. Some of the people only complained about their work or their marriages, which would immediately plant a seed in my head. Yeah, my wife does that too. Or, yeah, come to think about it, my job sucks. And that's why it's imperative that you surround yourself with like-minded individuals that have a positive mindset and similar success goals. If you have goals and ambitions to become a millionaire and you're best friends with someone who lives off of manipulating the system, chances are your goals are just useless thoughts. So stare at the lists and really think about each person. Do they know you? Do they help you? Do they support you? Do they motivate you to do better? And is it reciprocal? Do you do the same thing for them? What do you really lose by subtracting these negatives out of your life? Every link in your chain needs to be just as strong as you are. So I think I've beaten a dead horse with this, so I want to talk about rewards. But first, I want to give my sponsor and personal friend, Sal Rizzolo, a little shout out. Is this market driving you crazy? Even heading into the winter market, we're still dealing with never-before-seen hurdles for first-time home buyers and investors alike. If you look close, a majority of these complications actually lie on the financing side of things, and that's why we've partnered with Sal Rizzolo, a branch manager at Cardinal Financial. Sal Rizzolo has closed over 500 loans in his time at Cardinal Financial and can confidently say he's encountered almost any financial situation in regards to home financing. 
Whether you're a first-time home buyer, a seasoned investor, or just somebody who wants information and clarification on how to proceed to the next step, Sal Rizzolo welcomes and encourages all of your calls. An investor and seasoned realtor prior to financing, all of your questions will be answered whether it be from Sal personally or someone in his network. Feel free to reach out to Sal at 631-946-0654. Once again, that's 631-946-0654, and let him help you identify and get on the path to financial freedom. Again, Sal, thank you for everything that you do. All right, rewards. Have you ever seen an animal being trained? Why does a dog sit and give you its paw? Why does a mouse make it through a maze? Why does a seal jump through a hoop or balance a ball on its nose? You got it, the reward. If you stop giving the little fish or piece of cheese or dog treat to these animals after a task is completed, these animals are going to be reluctant to do the tasks. What's in it for them? Same thing goes for you. If you're doing tasks, completing goals, then how can you for a minute think that your motivation to work towards them is going to maintain consistency? You have to reward your successes. They don't have to be huge rewards, but you need to hold yourself accountable for them. Set a goal for the week and put a reward to it. If I close two sales this week, I'll buy myself a double fudge Sunday. You deserve it. If you end up closing four sales, you're going to increase your quota next week. That's self-motivation. You need to challenge and reward yourself. A fire can only burn if fuel is added. And nobody cares about your fire more than you do. So make sure that you reward yourself for your accomplishments. But hold yourself accountable. Show discipline and deny the reward if you don't succeed. If you're only satisfied with a participation award, then you'll never win the race. Guys, sorry for the short episode, but real estate investing is the pathway to success. Education is key. Go to outoftheratracepodcast.com, register, and you'll receive an ebook that'll explain to you where you can get the money to begin investing in real estate today. Stop chasing the cheese, learn how to make it for yourself, because only then can you truly escape the rat race. For Melissa, our staff, and myself, happy investing.